All right, welcome back. Now we're into uh, the next lesson here, lesson the third group of lessons. I grouped the lessons into, there's actually 11 paintings into there, but there's uh, six, six lessons. One of them, this lesson, has only one painting with it, the textured flowers. And uh, this is the actual, uh, the painting here of the textured flowers here. And I love this one, and I have uh, no varnish on it right now, so the colors are a little bit soft. They waken right up when you get it uh, uh, when you get it wet. The textured flowers lesson here, lesson three. And what we're going to do, same type of thing. We're going to model. This time I modeled the background with a lot of color. So you see that a lot of coloring going back in through here. Then I'll pick up some browns and stuff and make my browns from my blacks and my reds and my yellows. That's your classic brown. The real classic brown in painting simply is two parts red, one part black. And then I add a little yellow every once in a while to vary it. And then we'll ske we'll sketch in and we'll become very sketchy and loose and high contrast. And then we'll start building some flowers off of that. So let's let's get into into some of this now. You can build colors all different kinds of ways here, you know, with that. You can make your grays, of course, which is your black and white, and you can have, uh, let's just set this over here like this again. Okay, we'll kind of mark this, so we'll paint the little texture flowers right in here. Some grays, uh, warm them up with a little bit of greens. Lighter blues up at the top, I'll push in all kinds of colors, you know, into here. Nice, you know, a little bit of extender so it stays wet here. Push some all kinds of colors, some greens and stuff into there. Um, you know, you might want to take a little bit of yellow and black and push some greens into here. Push those around. All kinds of things and move these colors in and out and around. I always will come back with some like light into my brush and soften back. So all these backgrounds, you know, that I background treatments here. That's one of the things that uh, I sell a lot of my paintings and because a lot of it is because of the backgrounds. People go, God, I just love the backgrounds and your background treatments. And that comes from, I did a lot of studying of the Impressionist painters of the um, latter part of the 19th century and their backgrounds, Couchois and Eugene Pettit um, and, you know, how they, how they uh, work their colors and stuff was just amazing. You know, just amazing, and so I, I like to to model myself after some of those uh, some of those understandings where they really get a lot of interest. And a, a floral that has a lot of interest to a flower, like those mums and stuff, can have more can push more interest into the background. So, but we, I like to streak the colors a little bit and get lots of stuff going on, and uh, then we'll we'll push down now. You know, I did it with a slightly larger brush. You can paint large or small. I'm going to use an eight on this. And we'll step in and we'll say, okay, we'll come in and we'll, we'll, the thing is first is to, you'll have your pattern that you can put on and stuff, but you know, I, what I do is I'll come in and just start to say, okay, let's get some, uh, let's get some real sketchy, some movement here. Maybe I want my stems to come down here like this. I'll establish some movement. If I, if I make a mistake on a stem, like I just did, I just move it in there and create it back into the background and then just restate the stem again like this. And, and you get that lovely look, you get that lovely movement in there. So if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Stick your finger in it and move it around. Paint fast, paint confident. Now, that confidence only comes from painting it a lot, okay? So small bouquets like this, I do hundreds of them. I've done probably 50 of them this week, okay? Uh, so I'm very, very confident with it. So I make a mistake right there. It's, ah, don't worry about it, I'll push it right in, you know? It is okay. It's like, you know, when you're cooking something for the first time, you're reading a recipe really quickly. And then, you know, by the time you've made it 20 times, you're going, oh, yeah, yeah that's enough salt. Eh, that's enough. You know, it's like one of the things I cook around here at the house all the time is this gravy. And it, they call me the master of gravy. Well, before, I mean, I had to have the temperature right, so nothing clumped up and all of that stuff. And now I just boom, 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 and it, it always works. Um, that's the same thing. It takes practice. Paint it, paint it, paint it, paint it. So we'll move some of this out and around these little flowers, little flower units, little greens coming up through here like this, okay? I did a lot with my browns. Now brown is red and then it's black, a little bit of black, two parts red, one part black. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. I modeled that all onto the brush and I'll use these browns to come in and establish some interest here to these flowers and you go, wow, what is all of this stuff going on here? This is a lot of just really great movement here, okay? 
this is a lot of just movement. See how I'm just moving my brush, constantly sketching through. And what I'm trying to do as an artist is get movement, get interest in that, you know, into this painting. Let's get a little yellows out to there like that. Okay, so this movement here that I can then turn in and refine and and draw into uh, flowers. Okay, which I'll I'll do here in just a second. Okay, I'll pick out some flowers. Like maybe I'm going to pick out a nice dark red flower. Take a little red violet right into some of my red. Let's put one right over here, and I may come in and start to say, okay, here's going to come a red flower right in here like this. Okay, and I'll start to build this red flower here. Its movement in and out. I'll turn it, I'll angle it there just a bit like that. Okay, let's take a yellow flower, nice toned little yellow. Let's put one right up here, kind of yellowy flower right there. And maybe I'll take a little bit more green. We'll drop that right into here. And then right in here, let's just like a daisy here, let's move a, a white flower in and out here, in and out. Here like this and these and you see I'm doing very I'm using a lot of paint this is where it's gonna build we're gonna build and build and build and build so I'm constantly painting painting paint 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 building 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 now uh, so I have these flowers set up here and you can add all kinds of other little ones we may add some you know reds up here and you know in the uh, in the original uh, you know paintings there I went and did a little trail off of smaller little red type flowers up here, which are really kind of pretty, just paint very impressionistically here. And very impressionistically, this is where it makes it so much fun. You just kind of tap little things. Maybe I'll make that a little bud or something like that. And then I'll use my finger in to soften some of the edges and soften some of the stuff going around. Makes pretty little flowers. I'll do a little different here, and then I'll take a brighter red here at this, and I'll pull some of this brighter red out this time out from the center here. So flowers can be painted hundreds of ways. This is what makes them so pretty, is that you can paint them hundreds of ways here. So I'll take some of that color like that, pull out. Let's get back in and dive back into some of our red violet and we'll reshape some nice, some more clean petals here. A little bit more of an edge of that. We'll pull in, pull in, pull in. We'll pull red in in and out, working it in and out, and colors back and forth and back and forth. The flowers that are in the center area, man, they start getting very, very thick. And that's what you want. You want this thick, thick paint here. We'll take a little bit of that, drop that right into the center, maybe a touch of black with that. Yes, no, you can have both. I want you to sit there and you, you paint what your flower needs. You know, I may not have used black in mine, but maybe you need yours because you need that little bit of contrast. Go get it, okay? Go get it. Doesn't hurt it. Let's take a little bit of our red back out. So, you know, like everything, I like to paint these back and forth. So we'll take some of that out. Let's take some of this yellow. Let's drop some of this yellow, even some of this yellow and red. Let's take some of that red, drop that into the center of that daisy type flower. It's not a daisy, but let's just open it back up into there and let's just take some of that yellow right out, pull out from the center here like that. So we'll pull out. So a little different way here. We're moving color out. We'll take light, bang, pick up some light here. Let's pick up that light and let's pull from the center back um, from the outside edge in here. So boom. And I'll, I'll lay that on just very soft with the brush so that I get that texturing there, like that. So just that texturing. And maybe I'll let it be a little softer out here on this side. Maybe I'll let this just pick up a little bit and then we'll pick up nice texture, lots of white. This is that lot of white paint I like to use. And a lot of people are surprised at how much paint I use, but that's what gives me these beautiful depths of colors to a flower. Now I may wipe the brush, let's put a little bit of yellow in there and I may say, okay, let's take that back out. Wipe the brush, take that back out. Let's put a little more strike of a yellow in there, right in there like that. I want yellow maybe to show up more on that side. So we'll pull it down. So I'll work this flower back and forth. That's a little harsh right there. So maybe I'll just take that out, okay? 
or if I want to have an edge, I can always corner the brush like this, and I can always come in here like this, and I can draw that little edge to the petal like that that I want. And if I dig out like that, because I have all that dark red underneath there, I just lay a thick stroke of paint right back up on top of that. Okay, But I can use this just to, to come in and push little edges to the petals like that. Okay, a little corner, I can just corner and just put pick little edges. Just put little edges like that. I can lift out to that edge as well. So if I want to leave edges out like that, model some of your reds like this. Tap those around that center. Put that center in there. Maybe a touch of a, a nice touch of a Hansa there into the center. That's pretty. That works really nice on that little flower there. Maybe we'll take some of that red and that Hansa there, modeled on the brush, and add some of that in here as well, into that one. Maybe we'll, and you can take that one there and you can say, okay, I want to lighten that up, maybe one side here. We'll leave it darker there where it's going to go into that one. And then we'll just lighten it up with some pink strokes here, pulling out. So pull out, some light strokes pull out, and see each time I'm touching back to my palette so I don't because if I come out here I picked up dark see the dark that's right there on that edge if I stroke that right here again I'll put dark out to there so I want to go back in and grab some pink I want pink to be coming back in there so I add just a little bit of that and if I go in too far then I'll just do this I'll just restate I have no fear of painting back into that flower again because I know I paint back into that flower again I'm going to add more interest Maybe I want to put more brighter red. So I'll just add some brighter red right back in there. Right back into that side there. And let's just take a little lighter pink back out through that. So we have the sides of the flower here look completely different. Let's take a little red and a little red violet. Come back in a bit to that. And I'll paint back in and out several times until I get the look to that flower I want with the dark coming in and the light coming out here until I get the look to that flower that I want it to have. But each time I'm picking up and picking up and picking up paint and that's what gives it all these lovely textures. Maybe we want to have a little more red here and I'm watching it up against my white flower you know how much pink I want to have into that. We'll darken back down into our center again. Let's just come right around with a little more center contrast color. And then you can just quickly pick up that Hansa and just go right back in there again. And now you've got a beautiful flower again coming right back again. It's very easy to set that back in there and get this beautiful little texture flower. Let's give it a little more Hansa. Give it a little more pop today. Bang! There's that little flower there. You could add, I didn't on mine, but you could sit there and add little light little touches out here. Little light white pinky touches right out to there like that. That's pretty. You can add secondary petals in there. That would be pretty as well. Take a little bit of our reds. We'll add it into here. Okay. Let's paint in and out with some Hansa. Take some Hansa down in here. Tap it, tone it. What tones Hansa? Any kind of brown, brownish color, red and black. You could put some green in it right here and then touch it into some red, and that tones it down. If it goes too green, you have too much of the black. If it goes too too orange, you have too much of the red. Okay, and just and watch the color exchanges here that you want to have. Let's just put a nice in and out here. Nice little yellow going in and out there. Okay. Let's brighten it up and let's stroke in some nice bright haunts there. Like that. Isn't that pretty coming in like that? Okay. Uh, let's pick up a little white. Touch it right into those right there. Model that in so it's a little bit. And let's just stroke in some, a little bit of light petals here. Light edges to these petals. Boom, 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 boom. Just like that. Just that quick. And when I paint this paint like this this fast that's when I really like the flowers they're very very casual in nature take a little Hansa we'll just tap that right in there it's a pretty little flower that's nice you can if you get too much or if you want more red pick up some red tap some red in there tap that out 
onto the side. Put some red in there. Won't hurt it. You know, put a little bit of red violet down into the dark parts of these little flowers here. Just grab some red violet, touch it into, into those little things there, and you know, maybe give them a little dot of Hansa. Then you can go in and all kinds of, of greens here. You can have your greens and, and blue greens here. You just all kinds of greens, yellow greens. Make your yellow and black and some of your blue greens here. I love the blue greens into this, a nice fresh little color um, to come in, push in and just use your chisel of your brush and just let it dance around. Use the little corner of your brush. You can use a little liner if you want to, to uh, you know, get out and do some little lining things, liner work things. But just touch the little corners here like this. Have some a little bit more of a yellow green, you know, a little bit more of a yellow green through. You can negative paint always on anything at any time. You can take that dark, come in and negative paint to increase that contrast in those flowers, in, in those areas, and pull out some things that, uh, you know, you want to um, accentuate there. Just do some fun little painting. Have some fun with it. Some different greens coming out here. Let your brush just kind of dance. That's what I call the dance to, of the brush. And as after you get some of those on, maybe you want to have some smaller, like, little yellow flowers. You can just drop them in real fast. This toned yellow, then a little bit of, you know, find a couple of areas of little strokes of some Hansa like that. Then pick up a little bit of white. Come back in and just set those little flowers in. Very nice, real fast like that. Maybe a little chisel edge to make the front edge of a flower. Just chisel it across like that. And that'll help make the front edge of a flower. Grab a little red, shoot it into the center. There, that flower, tap it out like that. Grab a little Hansa, make a little center. And you can quickly add a little flower turning off there to the side. There are a lot of fun. It's build paint, build paint, build paint. And then when you're all done, build more paint. <laughs> okay? They're called textured flowers. There's a lot of paint in it. And it's build, 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 build. And it's a, good, it's a good exercise because you cannot press your brush down. If you press your brush down, you'll lift up everything that you're building. So it's a good exercise for you to learn to, to use texture and softness of your brush so you don't keep digging out. It's going to take practice, and it's going to take lots of practice. But it's a good thing because artists use paint to get interest. And if you want more interest, you need to use more paint. Okay? So remember that. Okay? See you on the next lesson.